Parshat Mishpatim is all about laws, detailed rules pertaining to all kinds of life circumstances. Slavery, assault and battery, sex, ox goring, judicial corruption, holiday observances, treatment of the poor, the kind of stuff that would keep rabbis busy for centuries. The Torah is famous for long lists of God's laws, and this is the first one in the Torah. But though we read it now as a list or a law code, Parshat Mishpatim is really a story, and the laws are actually a long speech from God to Moses. Moses is supposed to somehow relay all these laws to the people, though he isn't told how. First, Moses recounts what God said, and the people respond, Na'aseh, we will do. But then Moses does something strange. He writes the laws down in a scroll, a sefer, and reads it to the children of Israel. When he is done reading, the children of Israel add to their acceptance of God's laws the powerful phrase, Na'aseh venishma, we will do and we will listen, or we will do and we will obey. After the book is accepted, Moses ascends the mountain, along with Aaron, Aaron's sons, and 70 elders, for a most bizarre encounter with the divine. Atop the mountain, they glimpse God. What exactly they see, the text leaves to our imagination, but we are told that under God's legs was something like a pedestal of sapphire bricks, as clear as the skies. Strange stuff. But the point is that all along, it turns out, this parsha was about divine revelation. The people glimpse God with different senses, through multiple media, and in different ways. In this parsha, it's not about the thunderbolts or the stone tablets that made it into the famous movie. Instead, it's about the laws, the pedestal, and above all, the book. Jews often describe themselves as people of the book. But what does that mean, apart from the stereotype of Jews as nerdy bookworms? The Jewish religion is heavy on reading. Torah scrolls, prayer books, thick volumes of Talmud in crowded study halls. But so far, we haven't heard much about books in the Torah. And Moses' decision to go the book route with God's laws is pretty momentous. Why does Moses do it? The people had just heard his account. And these are the children of Israel who witnessed divine revelation on Mount Sinai, who directly perceived the sound and fury of God's voice. What do they need books for? Maybe Moses was afraid he'd forget, or that he'd be suspected of inaccuracy. Maybe he figured that written laws would be less likely to be amended or discarded. Maybe he wanted the law to be the special possession of some literate elite. Or maybe, even in a story where God speaks directly to human beings, writing can serve as an object of fascination and sanctity. After all, even people who live together sometimes decide to commit certain messages to paper.